Good morning. Good morning, family. Reverend David Hoxter here. It's a beautiful morning, and we are glad to have another opportunity to dig into the Word of God in spirit and in truth on this wonderful morning. So my prayer is that something is said this morning that shall inspire you along your way. Today's devotion comes uh, from the book of Romans, the 12th chapter and the first verse, and it reads as follows. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship, winning through sacrifice. Paul's language of sacrifice here, when it comes to our bodies and what is pleasing to God, inspired me to reflect on my youth, 12 years old, 13 years old, back when I first started playing organized football. And I can still hear the voice of my coaches who continually pushed us to sacrifice our bodies. Anybody who's ever played the game knows that if you play the game in a way where you're constantly trying to protect your body, you're constantly trying to, 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 to avoid uh, 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 getting hurt, that is a recipe for injury. The way to play the game is to play free, free from the worry of getting injured, free from trying to duplicate on game day all of the drills that were done way back in summer camp over and over and over again to prepare for the coming season, free from whatever fears the subconscious mind may harbor that may prevent making a 100% commitment to sacrificing the body on any given play to help the team receive a victory. And so it is in all of the Pauline letters, Paul is imploring us to be free, to be free in God, to be free in Christ. The challenge is how do we do that? The book of Romans addresses a lot of issues, issues that were important to the church in Rome at the time. He talked about justification by faith, the cultural tensions between Jews and Gentiles, how to stay strong in the faith, correcting misunderstandings of the gospel, helping people to understand their purpose in God and more. I mean, the book is rich, but this one passage of scripture where Paul is guiding us and how we are to use our bodies to be free to serve the Lord is particularly powerful. And although Paul does not go into a great deal of detail here in, in terms of a, of a detailed roadmap of what to do. He does give us some things in chapter one, verses 18 through 32, that we should avoid, things that we should not do, not do. And this is a big part of how Paul instructs us in how to live out our faith. He tells us the things to avoid, what not to do. Paul implores us to avoid idol worship, exchanging the truth of God for the lies of this world believing that we can find peace in our hearts and fulfillment from earthly passions that are like empty calories to our spirits. He implores us to pour things into our bodies that are preparing our bodies for service in and to the Lord. This is one of the reasons Christ came, was to release us from the need to, to sacrifice rams and, and bulls and, and goats and, and so forth. And there are some things, although we are, are have moved away from those practices, there are some things we can learn from those Old Testament practices in that there was the importance of preparation. There was no sacrifice without preparation. We must take the time to understand how to prepare our bodies for the sacrifice that God is calling us to. I can still hear my coach's voices all these years later, yelling from the sideline to remind us to sacrifice our bodies. One of the most amazing things to me that just amazes me to this day 
is how God transformed a once vacant lot that served as the practice field for the Ivy Hill Saints, a neighborhood football team that prepared young men not only for battle on the gridiron, but also taught us lessons that can be used throughout our lives. How, how decades later, God transformed what we did not know at the time was sacred ground into the current home of the E9 Eagles where young men are taught those same basic principles of how the road of sacrifice leads to winning. The game is the same. The game has not changed. The game was the same back when we were on that vacant lot as it is today, when we were on this beautiful field that God has, has, has given us today. The game has not changed. And just like the game has not changed, God has not changed. God still wants us to win through sacrifice. God wants, to, wants us to sacrifice the things of this world and pre present our bodies as a, a living sacrifice so that we can do the things that God is calling us to do. So whether it's a wide receiver stretching out for the ball, who knows that the hit is coming, or whether it's a quarterback planting and preparing to, to pass, unsure that the hit is coming from the blind, from the blind side, whether you, whatever position you're playing, you know the hit is coming. But in order to be successful, to stay uninjured, and to be able to be in service to the team, you have to sacrifice the bodies. So it is with God. Whatever God is calling you to do, beloved, requires sacrifice. Whether it's abstinence or monogamy, getting in shape, or bringing your vices under submission, you too can do so through sacrifice. Faith in Christ. Now, I pray that something was said to inspire uh, my brother who's coming. I'm going to play my favorite pandemic game and pass the mic like DJ Cassidy to my brother from another mother, Reverend Miles. Miles, you got it. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm hyped, bro. I'm hyped. <laughs> I appreciate the analogies, the football analogies for sure. Put me in the game, coach. I'm ready. Man, thank you. Thank you for the setup, man. Thank you for being you and authentically uh, giving us the word of God this morning. So good morning, Enon. Good morning. I am Reverend Miles. Obviously, I'm not Reverend Waller. Um, we thank God for our senior pastor, and we thank God that he is modeling even what we're talking about on today. Um, uh, it has been, my, my daughter said it, she's doing a PT clinical, and she said the other day, it's been a long month this week. And I said, wait, wait, no, she said, I said it the way I meant it. It's been a long month this week. So if you think about it, it has been, it has been, a lot's been going on. Um, it, even as the year has begun, it's a lot. And so we come and we thank our pastor for modeling. Just, I pray that you pray for him, let him catch some rest. I mean, from Monday, Tuesday, uh, just pouring out over the weekend. So we thank God that he's modeling kind of what God models for us. Uh, six beats and a pause, taking some Sabbath rest uh, even on today. So I greet you and it's another day's journey and we are so glad about it. So I greet you with Jesus joy on today. And I do thank Reverend Hoxter for reminding us about this reasonable service. Uh, let's stick with the football analogy for, uh, throughout this time together. Um, Keyshawn Johnson, the receiver, has a talk saying, come on, man. And he kind of opens with, come on, man, and then he talks about whatever he's talking about. And this is kind of what Paul is saying. He's saying, come on, man. This is your, your reasonable service. After all that the Lord has done for you, and that verse is 1 through 11, he then hits us with, with uh, I mean, chapter 1 through 11, chapter 12, he hits us with like, come on, man. This is your reasonable service. The Lord has called you out of darkness into light. He has died on the cross for you. He's wrote, risen again. He's given you all the keys. It's now it's time for you to use them. So come on, man. And it's, 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 um, it's like this. I, I think, let's see, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Um, there is this urban poet laureate, um, urban poet laureate. Um, his name is O'Shea Jackson. O'Shea Jackson. Now, if you know who O'Shea Jackson is, he's also known as Ice Cube. And so Ice Cube had a song out, um, and it was a collaboration with Das Effects, um, entitled, Check Yourself Before You Wreck Yourself. 
And that's essentially what we're talking about on today. Look, look, we're talking about the body. We're talking about the body. We're talking about reasonable service and being prepared for the master's use. So yeah, you do have to check yourself. We're asking you on today to kind of pause and, and do a self-evaluation. How am I doing with the gift that the Lord has given me? Am I honoring God uh, through all aspects of my being with my body, my mind, and my soul? And only you can answer that question. Only you can. And so there's an acronym that we use in counseling, and I'm going to ask you as, as part of the action step to apply this. It's called HALT, H-A-L-T. And so you got to HALT, you got to stop, you got you to check yourself, you got to stop for a minute, and you have to assess. And in that assessment, you got to check for hunger, number one, because if you're hungry, uh, like the Snickers commercial, you're not yourself. Um, if you're angry, you're then in your feelings and you're operating not with the brain. Uh, I think that was alluded to earlier this week. If you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling some kind of way, and if you're not feeling loved and part of a group, that can impact how you feel. And then lastly, if you're tired, if you are tired, um, it's not the, 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 you're not at your best, nor is it also the best time to make decisions um, that are impacting and lasting. So you got to halt. We're asking you to halt. That's the action step, halt. And so write down this H-A-L-T and assess when things have gone negatively in your life. Has it been as a result when I was hungry? Has it been a time when I was angry? I was in my feelings and not thinking, not even breathing right. I was lonely or I was tired. That's the action step. That's the action step for the day as we focus in on the body. It's about our reasonable service, the blessings of God. He's called us to a marvelous work uh, and we have to be prepared for the master's use. So that's what we're focusing on today as it relates to the body. We just thank God for all that's been going on throughout the 31 days. And even on yesterday, we thank God for you all turning out for the, uh, the senatorial forum, and just know, just know there was an, a, an abrupt ending to it. I mean, you know, technology is what it is, and those gremlins are, are there, but we're asking you to uh, just kind of come give us a little time. We're going to clean it up, and if you had not watched it or if you at least want to know what those, those closing remarks were, uh, you can then look at all of our social media platforms and join us there. Um, amen. And there was about 2,000 of you all who participated, and we know that number is going to grow. And I also want to thank you and, and commend you because you've been consistent. So we're hitting that 2,000 number uh, in the mornings consistently. And so again, think about the spiritual discipline that comes with getting up early, giving God your first, few, first fruits, letting prayer and meditation and devotion set the tone and tenor for the rest of your day. And so you stay with us, we'll stay with you, and God is absolutely going to get the glory. So again, action step, check yourself, stop for a minute, check, review, run through the acronym, HALT, assess where I am. And if I'm not my best self, then I do want to fall back until I can become my best self or my better self that I can give God glory in all that I say and all that I do. Look, that's it for the day. I'm excited. Brother Hoxter has set the, set the bar this morning. I'm gonna go get this workout in. I appreciate you all. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. As we go to the Lord in prayer, Lord, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for ultimately dying on the cross for our sins, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the reminder that we have a reasonable service as you have done for us, Lord, we are to do for others. And so now, Lord, we pause and we ask that you would give us the ability through the aid of the Holy Spirit to halt, to stop, to assess, that we would check ourselves, Lord, that we would not wreck ourselves, that we would not sin against thee. Lord, get glory in all things. We offer this day unto you, Lord God. We ask, Lord, that you would, through your precious Holy Spirit, allow us to live it on purpose, get glory for yourself, in Jesus' name we pray and do say amen.